Uh, as we turn to the word of the Lord, we want to come back to the, the uh, subject that we spoke on, that I spoke on last week about fasting. Remember I told you last week, I had eight, I, well actually I had 59 pages of notes. I had eight pages of sermon. You got three pages of it. Uh, but I want to move in a, uh, in a different direction this morning as we talk about fasting. Um, as we look at what the Lord has done in our hearts this week at how we have responded to him and what we can look forward to and what we can expect in the days ahead and in this uh, and in this time ahead um, and so I, I didn't want to leave it just where we ended last week but I want us to, to look ahead as well how many of you got up this morning and you had a big cup of coffee that you hadn't had all week long how many of you did just fine? And how many of you sort of had a stomach upset? <laughs> I'm holding off on tea one more day. Um, how many of you were counting? Oh, great, Sunday, I can eat again. <laughs> Do any of you have any confessions to make? Yes. Yes, Pastor Renee. I ate last night. <laughs> Last night was tough. Last, last night was tough. <laughs> Not much, but... <laughs> you know, your pastors try to be honest with you. You know, we are people too. We're just like you. We struggle with the same things. Uh, we, all, we all have the same things. And I had, last night I had made, uh, made myself a, a, just a, a, vegetable, a vegetable broth, and I had some last night as well. But I, I have a confession also, just as Pastor Renee had one. Friday. I went online and I looked at recipes for half an hour <laughs> and they all looked so 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 good to me <laughs> they looked so so good um, so it really uh, it really and I really I really have I had to discipline myself even a little bit more yesterday and then today as as we're ending the as we're ending the corporate fast um, because my flesh is like yes let's eat but I, I want to gain all the benefits um, of fasting for those of you that were not with us this uh, last week I want to as as we're going to be talking about fasting and as I'll be talking with you again and asking you some questions and some of you may be sitting there saying Yes, but Matthew 6 says don't talk about fasting. So just a reminder for anybody who wasn't here with us last week that in our understanding, when Jesus said don't let people know that you're fasting, that was, he was actually talking about the Pharisees who were, who were doing something extra, who were being very hypocritical about what they did to gain the praise of men. And so Jesus was dealing with the attitude of their hearts because their, their hearts were wrong and their motivations were wrong. Their motivations were to gain the praise of men as people would look at them and say, oh, you're so holy because you're fasting twice a week, uh, twice a week, which is what the Pharisees did and they did it very openly. And Jesus said, don't do it like that. Um, and so he was dealing with heart attitudes. So as we talk very openly this morning and as we talk about some of the things that we went through uh, in, our, in our time of fasting, we want to do it with the right motivation. It's not to honor us. It's not to point to us because we were pretty much, most of us were fasting in some way throughout this week. But it is to just to understand what the Bible says about fasting and to have it clear in our hearts and to honor the Lord and His work in our lives in this week. Amen? Amen. 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 So we want to, to look again. We return to fasting. I imagine for some of you this past week, you took more time to read the Word of God and perhaps you read more passages about fasting in the Bible. Did some of you do that? You may have read through this one and that one, through the Old Testament and through the New Testament. And I want to just mention one thing as we, as we finish up this morning talking about fasting and looking what the Bible says. If you noticed, if you read through the Bible about fasting, did you notice some fairly big dif differences between Old Testament and New Testament in fasting? You probably did. Often in the Old Testament, fasting was associated with mourning and it was associated with repentance, wasn't it? And there were often corporate fasts when the, the nation of Israel would stand before God. Uh, they did in the time of Ezra because they had sinned greatly. They had broken the law, the, the law of the Lord in such a way that um, it was the very thing that had brought them into slavery, uh, into the, in, under the other ungodly nations around them, and then they turned right around uh, a few years after that and did it again. And if you'll remember on that time, 
Ezra was so distraught that he fasted before the Lord. It was an absolute fast for three days, no food and no water in mourning and others. And so we see that more in the Old Testament. It's different in the New Testament, isn't it? Um, when we look at the New Testament, we, uh, as far as an absolute fast, I'm trying to think, as far as I know, there's only one, I didn't make a, uh, I didn't make a big long list, there's only one absolute fast in the New Testament, as far as I remember, and that was Paul, after he was struck blind on the road to, to Damascus, and he uh, went on into Damascus after he had received the Lord, and for three days and three nights, he neither ate nor drank. But there's no, the Bible doesn't talk about uh, Paul being in mourning or anything like that at that time. Um, but it does seem that during that time, God was dealing with Paul very, very deeply, doesn't it? Because he spoke to him about, I'm calling you, you're going to be, you're going to go to the Gentiles, you're going to spread my gospel. Just a complete switch of his life. So I would suspect, although the Bible doesn't tell us a lot about it, that for Paul during that time, it was a time of intense communion with the Lord, the Lord speaking to him and Paul opening his heart to the Lord. But we do see other times of fasting uh, and prayer in the New Testament, not necessarily associated with mourning and repentance. What's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament then? Why do we see that so much in the Old Testament and we really don't see it at all in the New Testament for times of mourning or for repentance? For me, I think the answer is quite clear, and I think it's because in the New Testament, we are living in a new agreement and a new covenant with the Lord, and we're no longer under law, and we are living in the time of grace and the time of mourning and repentance that you would see in the Old Testament as they came before the Lord. It was genuine and it was real and God had touched their hearts. But for you and for me, as New Testament Christians, we have Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have Jesus, don't we? And praise the Lord. And we've, we quote so many times, 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so some of the things we see in the Old Testament, praise the Lord, we have been set free from those things and we can go confidently and boldly to the throne of grace and receive the grace that He needs, that we need um, to be forgiven as we repent and then to walk again with the Lord. It doesn't mean that we are to treat repentance lightly or that we are to treat sin lightly. And if anything, times of fasting, as I've already talked with some of you this morning as you've shared with me, times of fasting, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, show us our own sinfulness very, very clearly, don't they? Um, we'll, as we're praying and waiting on the Lord, things will come, come up in our lives or we will find that we may get extra irritable or we lose our temper more easily or things like that. And, and it's not that we, we don't want to stumble, but praise the Lord that that is brought to the surface so that in the light of the Lord, the Holy Spirit can deal with those things in our lives, right? And that's how we live as New Testament Christians in the grace of God in the grace of God, and that's how God has called us to live. Um, and so, as the Lord has brought up things in our lives in this week, as we have been fasting and praying, we let the Lord deal with them, and we say, God, that, that's in me, and Lord, you're right. It's there, and it's ugly, and it's not beautiful like as Jesus is beautiful. Lord, work on that in my life and get, and get rid of it. But we, we, we can come, it's, as we fast, it's, it come, we come differently than those under the law did in the Old Testament. And praise the Lord for that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So, as we, as we look ahead, I want us to consider some of what we have gone through this last week. And I want to look at um, uh, uh, three or four things that God was doing in our hearts this past week if we were fasting. Let me go ahead and say something now that's actually later in my notes. If you did not fast this past week for whatever reason, don't sit there under condemnation or guilt. Well, I didn't fast and everybody else did and they're good Christians and I'm a bad Christian. But I am going to encourage you that in the time ahead and shortly ahead that you take time to fast. Wait on the Lord and say, okay, God, I do want to, I do want to, to make this part of my Christian life and I, I want to so work in my heart and purpose before the Lord to do that. Um, you may not, you may not have just felt led to do it this past week or you 
may have been unable to because of your circumstances, but don't live under condemnation and guilt that the enemy pours on you that makes you feel even worse. The Holy Spirit of God, when He deals with our hearts, will deal very clearly and if there is a guilt from God I should have and I didn't, then we can do something about it because we're living in grace and we're living in, we're living with the love of the Lord shining upon us. The, the Old Testament had the love of the Lord as well, but it was a different dispensation and so we can respond very openly to the Lord in this way. So I want to encourage you. And I want to encourage you right now as well. Some of you, when the week began this last week, you had determined, I'm going to do this in my fasting. And you weren't able to follow through in what you did. Um, and I want to encourage you, we're going to talk about that this morning just a little bit later as well. Um, but I want to talk first of all as we look at what went on this week in our hearts and in our lives about what fasting has done in our hearts and our lives, especially if when we come with the right motive and fasting must be done in the right motive. I find for me, I don't know about you, but when I fast and this last week as I was fasting and waiting on the Lord, one of my constant prayers was, or daily prayers was, Lord purify my motive. Lord purify my motive. I want my heart to be right. Don't you want your heart to be right? And it's so easy for our hearts to be wrong, right? It's just, it's so easy to kind of do this way. It's so easy to start feeling a little bit spiritual. It's so easy to hear about somebody else and be really honest. You know, there you are fasting and you see somebody else eating, eating something, another person in Lighthouse eating something, and there's a little in your brain and you go, hmm, I'm, huh, thank you, Jean, for laughing, because you know it's true. And there's something inside that sort of goes, I'm fasting. There's just a little, there's, is that just me? Thank you. And so we constantly ask the Lord to purify our motives, purify our heart as we fast, and He will. So don't live under condemnation, and we don't live under guilt, and we don't live under legalism, and we just bring our hearts to the Lord, and He keeps purifying our hearts. But one of the things, as you waited on the Lord this last week, these are some of the things that we will have found. Number one, we will have, we will have found, or we will be beginning to find, a revitalized personal communion with the Lord. Amen? So number one, a revitalized personal communion with the Lord. How many of you, and we talked about this last week, last Sunday, as we started fasting, your heart was dry, the spiritual fires were low, you were only fasting because you felt like you should because we're calling a fast at Lighthouse, and so I'm going to fast. But there was very little fervor or zeal in your heart. Maybe there wasn't a lot going on. Yes? That may be true for many of us. How many of you found that as you persevered throughout the week, waiting on the Lord, giving Him time, whether you felt like it or not, or even when you really didn't feel like it, that's when it's a sacrifice, and the Lord honors sacrifice. He always honors sacrifice. But you found that as you continued to persevere in the Lord, that He began to change your heart, right? Where you had been dry before, He began to pour the rain of His Holy Spirit where your heart had been hard, he began to soften it, didn't he? And as you persevered with the Lord, the Lord began to restore a communion with him, perhaps that you have not felt in a while or that you have, that you have lost over time for whatever reason. And that is one of the things that happens when we fast. There's a revitalized personal communion with the Lord. That's what, he, that's what happens. How many of you found that as you went to the Word of God, that as you read the Word of God, that the Word of God was more alive to you? Yes? Yes. As you went to the Word, you oh, I hadn't, I, and you found yourself listening more intently. You found yourself listening with more focus and with more purpose. Yes, that's right. And that's one of the things that fasting and prayer does in our lives. So a revitalized personal communion with the Lord. What else have we experienced in this past week? For many of us, the Lord has restored our first love. Now that's very similar to the first one, isn't it? But the Lord has restored our first love. Think back with me just to a minute. Remember how it used to be when you first got saved? Do you remember that? 
Oh, the zeal that you had for the Lord. You said, oh, God, you didn't want anything else but God, right? You, you didn't care. Somebody said, well, let's go. Do this. No, no, no. I have to go home and t spend time with God. And the, the sun was shining brighter and, and people were friendlier and, and everything. And there was just a, there, because of, because of the, the love that you had for the Lord, when, you, when he first came into your heart, when he first came into your life. And for many of us in this past week, during our times of fasting and prayer, there has been a restored first love and a restored joy of salvation. Amen? Amen. Oh, that, Pastor Renee, I agree with you. It's just a little bit pitiful. But I'm going to talk about that in just a minute as well. No, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it right now. Your pastor stood up this morning during praise and worship time and we kind of stopped the, the singing that was going on and we spoke to you. Uh, we spoke to you firm, strongly and we don't often don't do it that way. But I want to speak to you again right now and let me tell you what's going on right now in the spirit. The enemy wants to distract you and the enemy wants to discourage you from the blessings that the Lord has for you during this time of fasting and prayer. He wants to make you feel that all of your prayers, all of your fasting, all of your sacrificing of yourself and humbling yourself before the Lord didn't really do anything because look, see how you feel right now? There's no special spark. This isn't a special victory service and I'm, kind, and I'm really sleepy and I want to tell you something. And you know we don't usually talk this way, but you know what? I don't want the enemy to deceive us this morning. That's what's happening and that's what's going on. So stand firm in the Lord. Stand strong in the Lord. This is the time that you fight. Amen? Amen. This, is the, this, is, this is what it is. And you know we don't often talk this way in Lighthouse, but this is what it is. So stand firm in the Lord. If you start getting it, whatever, just buck yourself up. Tell the person next to you to do that to you, the holy elbow. Let's get out the holy elbow again. Okay, we've had it packed away for a while. Get out the holy elbow again and use that. And just, and just say, Lord, I'm going to receive from you all that you have for me. And I'm not trying to make light, but I... But I'm speaking to you as your pastor this morning. Pastor Renee and I are in agreement on this. Stand firm, okay? Stand firm and say, Lord, I'm not going to be discouraged. Or, Enemy, I'm not going to be discouraged. Lord, I'm going to keep my focus on you and I'm going to receive everything that you have for me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Ready? That was better, wasn't it? There we go. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he'll restore our first love. How does this happen during fasting and prayer? I think it's partly because we really humble, our, we are humbled in fasting and prayer just as we were when we first came to the Lord. Remember when you first came to the Lord as a Christian and you turned away from your old life and you just said, oh God, I don't want to live that way, I don't want to be that way, and your heart was very soft and you were really humbled before him because you were so aware of what God had saved you from and how he changed your life. And so your heart was really soft and you had a humble heart before the Lord. And when we have a humble heart before the Lord, we are able to receive the blessings of the Lord and the Lord works more strongly and more powerfully on our behalf. I promise you that. And if you have spent time in fasting and prayer with the right motives this week, however you feel right now, however you feel this morning, I promise you something right now. I tell you something right now what's going to happen in the days ahead. You are going to find God is going to be more at work in your heart and in your life and in the situations that you're facing. Why? Because you have said, oh, God loves me more because I fasted? Absolutely not. Your time of fasting has not made God love you any more. He can't love you any more than he already has and that he already does when he gave you Jesus and when he saved you. But what it does do is our hearts are humbled and we are humbled before the Lord. And God has said so many times in his word, when you humble yourself, I will answer you. When you humble yourself, you will be found by me. When you humble yourself, I will defeat the enemy and I will raise you up. And that's what you can expect in your life in the days ahead. That's what you can expect in your family in the days ahead. Amen? Amen. Amen. What else has fasting done this week? Fasting has revealed our true spiritual condition, hasn't it? I was talking with one sister just before service and she came up to me and she said, Oh, you know, and then Sister Jennifer, and then I saw these sins and little and big sins, and, but they're all sins. And 
fasting does do that in our hearts and our lives because we're setting our eyes on the Lord and we see more of the Lord and we see more of the Lord's holiness and it shows us where we are not like the Lord. Amen? And that's what fasting, that's what fasting and prayer does. But praise the Lord, it's during those times. Don't live under that guilt and don't live, don't stay under, don't stay under condemnation. But we go to the Lord, we let Him take care of it in our lives, we confess it, and He takes care of it. He forgives us and we keep on walking. Amen? Amen. Amen. What else happens? I want to give you a, a, a promise of the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 13, and 14. We often quote what comes before that, but I love these verses too. Look at, at the promise of the Lord. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. He was speaking to the tribes of Israel who had been so, <clears throat> who had been so, uh, so sinful and so far from him. In this section is also, for I know the plans, this is what we always quote, right? For I know the plans I, ha I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and uh, hope and give you hope in a future and all of that. We always quote that, don't we? We always hold on to that. But don't stop with those verses. Go on to these verses as well. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. And when we set apart ourselves in fasting and prayer that is part of wholeheartedly seeking the Lord Joel 2 12 and I want us to look at it in the amplified look at what Joel 2 12 says therefore also now says the Lord turn and keep on coming to me I like that don't you turn and keep on coming to me with all of your heart with fasting with weeping with mourning until every hindrance is removed and the broken fellowship is restored isn't that beautiful isn't that a wonderful understanding? And Joel describes more of what the Lord was talking about in Jeremiah when he says, when you seek me wholeheartedly. And he describes, this is a wholehearted seeking. And as you have sought the Lord in fasting and in prayer, fasting is one expression of wholeheartedness. It's not the only expression, but it's one of the expressions of wholeheartedness before the Lord. And you can be sure that the blessings of the Lord are going to come and fall upon your life. What else do we see in fasting? And I'm, I'm, moving, I'm, I'm moving quickly because I do want to go, get, all, get all the way through this morning and have some time just as we, as we close in prayer a little bit later on this morning. What else has fasting done this week? It has given us a renewed closeness with the Lord and a, a, a sensitivity, a greater sensitivity to spiritual things as we have, as we have just, the Lord has just been more real to us. So it's a renewed, um, it's a renewed closeness, a renewed sensitivity. But I want to say something this morning to those of you that say, Pastor Jennifer, as you talk about those things, those things sound so wonderful, but those things have not really been my experience in fasting this week. And if I were to ask you to raise your hands this morning, some of you would say that. Some of you would perhaps say, my time of fasting was very low key. No great spiritual mountaintops. No shouting victory. No this or that. And I want to encourage you if you did not have a mountaintop experience this week in fasting. Each one of us is different. And what God is doing in our hearts and in our lives is individual. If you did not have a mountaintop experience, it does not mean that you failed in fasting. It does not mean that God did not look upon you with favor as you fasted. It does not mean that your fasting was a failure and you've blown it and you might as well just go on to living as you normally live. I have gone through times of fasting, I'll be really honest with you, when I just fasted because I knew I should be fasting or it was a corporate fast time and I felt, I felt very little the whole time. In fact, part of the time, especially one of the first times I fasted, I just felt like death, death, death. Have you ever felt that? Just sort of death, death, death. Let me tell you why. I remember the very first time I fasted. Uh, I was a, a, a teenager in my upper teens, and it was the first time I fasted, so it was many, many years ago. And I was fasting, I, I don't even remember how long now. Maybe it was three days. I was a little, I think I was a little too ambitious the very first time, but anyhow, or I, I don't know how long it was, but I think that was about how long. And I just felt like death. I, there was no victory. I was praying and my prayers just sounded like this and I didn't feel anything either. And so um, 
I, I said, but Mom, I don't feel any whatever. And my mom, who is a really spiritual and godly woman, said to me with great wisdom, Honey, it's because fasting is about dying. <laughs> and it's true. Fasting is about dying. Flesh dies when we fast. And I don't just mean we lose some weight, but the flesh, and <laughs> although we do lose some weight, right? <laughs> fasting. Oh, no, I don't even, don't, I won't go down that road, but anyhow. But fasting is about flesh, the fleshly man, the natural man, the carnal man dying. It is. That's what it's, it's about. It's about that part of us that wants to be boss. It's about that part of us that wants to rule. It's about that part of us that rises up against the things of God in our lives. And that's what dies when we fast. It is. That's what is weakened and that's what dies. And so if some of you are feeling like death, that's what was dying. And you say, praise the Lord and just bury that old thing and keep on walking in the Lord. Keep on walking in the Lord. Nevertheless, if you had a very low key experience in fasting and prayer this week, I want to encourage you about the days ahead about the days ahead. And that's why I also spoke to you just a bit earlier. I want to encourage you because some of us, because of how we're feeling, we felt like, well, it wasn't very successful. I don't feel very uh, joyful. I don't feel very victorious. That's a lie of the enemy. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Instead, believe the promises of God. And the promises of God are this. Number one, we talked about this last time, Acts 13, 2 and 3. This is when Barnabas and Saul and the other leaders, not just leaders, it said they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. It doesn't even say that it was just the leaders. They were gathered together. Um, Acts 13, 2 and 3. And we see in Acts 13, 2 and 3, we talked about this last time, that in the days ahead, so this is what has been our experience this week, what can we expect in the days ahead? You can expect in the days ahead that the Lord is going to reveal His purposes in your life if you have been seeking Him. He is going to clarify His purposes in your life and His calling in your life. Some of you have been praying, God, what do you have for me? Some of you have been praying, God, what do you want me to do about this? God, in my heart, I desire, I, I desire to serve you more. I want to do more. And in the days ahead, you can expect that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you what God has for you. It may be a sudden revelation as this was. This was very dramatic, wasn't it? Very dramatic. And we like dramatic, don't we? We like black and white. We'd like to hear the voice of God from heaven say, do this and do that. And every great once in a while, the Lord will do something like that very, very dramatically. He did that for me when he called me to China in 1986, many, many, many years ago. But I'll be honest with you, most of the other revelations of the Lord in my life and the callings of God in my life have been gradual, have been step by step. They have been an unfolding. And so I encourage you this morning, wait patiently on the Lord. If he gives you a dramatic revelation, praise the Lord. If you don't yet have that, wait on the Lord. Wait patiently for Him and expect an unfolding, an, uh, a clarifying in the days ahead. This you can expect in the days ahead. What else can you expect in the days ahead? Acts 14, uh, uh, sorry, and then uh, right here, they laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. You are going to find more anointing for ministry. You're going to find uh, more confidence as you serve the Lord. Those of you that have been very tentative, well, I'm not sure about this and I'm not sure about that. If you have spent time in fasting and prayer and your motives were right as you waited on the Lord, you are going to find that as you minister in small things or large things, you are going to find a greater confidence and an authority as you do that. And I don't mean that in, hmm, I know what I'm doing. Not at all. Not at all. Because what does fasting do? Fasting humbles the natural part and it allows the spirit man in us to be strong and you're going to find a greater authority and anointing in ministry and some of you say well ministry I'm not the pastor I'm not the worship leader brothers and sisters every one of us if we are children of God we have been called to minister 
in minister in the Lord. It may be one-on-one, -on -one, it may be in groups, it may be at our work, it may be in other places, but we are called to minister in the Lord. What else? And that's an amen. That's true. It's true. We are to minister. And then what else do we see? Acts 14, 23, Paul and Barnabas, with prayer and fasting, they turned the elders over to the care of the Lord in whom they had put their trust. In the decisions that are facing you ahead, you are going to find greater clarity now. We talked about this last week, but I just want to encourage you this morning as we've come to the end of our corporate time of prayer and fasting. You right now this morning may be sitting there and you've said, I've prayed for guidance. I still don't know what to do. Wait on the Lord. Be patient. Don't let go. Don't give up. You have called on Him, and the promise of the Lord is, call to me and I will answer you. Wait patiently for me and I will come to you. That's the promise of the Lord. And we're going to end later on this morning with just looking at some of the promises of the Lord. So what you can expect is as you face some of these difficult decisions ahead of you, you are going to find a greater clarity and you're going to know what to do when the time comes. And when the deadline is there and you say, well, I've got to give an answer, you can trust the Lord to help you give the right answer because you have humbled yourself before Him. And His promise to you is, when you humble yourself before Him, He will answer you. He will answer you. Amen? Amen. He's going to clarify His call upon your life. And I want to speak to you this morning. As I was preparing yesterday, the Lord put something very, very firmly in my heart just to share with you this morning. There are many of us here this morning who want to serve the Lord more fully, but we don't really know how. We're, we, we love the Lord. We're coming to church. And then we're going home, and next week we're coming back to church again. And during the week we're doing the work that we need to do. And we're following the Lord. But I want to say to you this morning, I believe the Lord has more for each one of us to do. God has more for each one of us. God has great, a greater purpose for each one of us. I don't believe that our jobs define our purposes as children of God. Our lives and our goals and our directions are not to be ordained by bosses who tell us what our projects are and who tell us what we should be doing or by employers who say clean this and clean that and do that or whatever. That's part of our lives but that those are not our goals. Those are not our directions. Those are not the purposes of our lives. Those are the things that we do as we live for the Lord, but our direction and our goals and our purposes are to be God-given, God-oriented, God-directed, God-honoring, and God-empowered. Amen? Amen? That is to be, it's to be from the Lord. And I want to challenge you and encourage you. Let the Lord renew your purpose in Him so that it's not just, well, I'm doing what I have to do. I come to church. I'll go back next Sunday. I'll come to church again. Begin to perk up your ears in the Spirit and let the Lord begin to give you a purpose and a direction. This is what I have for you to do. And as you, as you let the Lord work that into your heart and into your spirit being, I want to tell you what will happen. What you will find is as you work in the office, in the work that you have to do, in the work that God has called you to do, God has called you. If you are working in that office, now if you're working in a place and you think, I'm not supposed to be here and I'm, God, I'm not supposed to be here and, and God wanted me somewhere else, then get out of where you are. Change, if, if now don't just run home and... And <laughs> don't do that. Make sure it's the Lord. But I do want to say this. If you have been in a situation that you can change, even if it's difficult, but you've been stuck, you've been in it, and you're kind of stuck in it, and you know in your heart, God, this is not what you have for me. Lord, this is not, I, I'm, I am walking in disobedience because I am staying in this. Then I want to challenge you and encourage you. You do something about it. You do something about it. It, but other than that, if you are working in an office, I want you to let the Lord work in your heart and your life so that as you go to work and as you do the secular work that you have to do, whether you are signing contracts or making deals or building furniture or drawing designs or doing this or doing or tutoring or, or cleaning the toilet or whatever, it is unto the Lord and it is for the Lord and it is because God has called 
you to serve him as you work through that as you, and as you walk through that. And if you will wait on the Lord, he will do that in your life. He will revitalize you. He will restore that part of you so that you won't take those days and say, this is just wasted time. The only time that counts is Sunday when I'm at church with my brothers and sisters. God wants every day to count in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. He wants every day to count. And as you wait on him, as you have fasted and prayed, you just say, Lord, restore that in my life. Lord, do that in my life. Lord, I receive that into my heart and into my life. And I want to tell you this morning, I very, very clearly, I believe that's a word from the Lord. In addition to just, yes, we're, we're looking at the word and we're teaching. That's the... I believe that's the Lord's encouragement for you in your lives. As, as we look ahead, let the Lord revitalize your heart and your purposes. He has called you. He's the one who directs your life. It's not a boss. It's not a boss. And in the days ahead, in the days ahead, expect the Lord to renew your vision and your purpose in that area. Amen? And wait on Him and look for Him to do that. And expect Him to do that. And call on Him to do that in your life. You're going to find in the days ahead, and I mentioned that earlier, but I just want to stress it again, that you are going to be prepared and equipped for greater ministry. So you need to get ready. Get ready for that. Say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. The things that he's spoken to your heart, you wait on him. You keep praying about those things and prepare. You don't have to push, but you can just say, Lord, I'm obedient. Here I am. Here I am. That's what Isaiah said to the Lord when he saw the glory of the Lord. And he said, here I am. Send me. And when we make ourselves available, the Lord will use us. The Lord will use us. It may be something big. It may be something small. But to the Lord, it's all big. It's all big. Because if he calls you to do something, God calls us to do things that are eternal. God calls us to do things that have eternal significance. God calls us to do things that will make a difference in other people's lives and in our own lives as well. And so be prepared and be ready to walk into the things that God has for you to do after this time of fasting and prayer. Amen? Amen? You can expect in the days ahead breakthroughs in difficult areas in your lives and in your situations. The things that you've been praying about this week. Some of you in this week may have already received some very specific answers. Has anybody received some specific answers already to, to in, in some really hard areas that you were praying about? Anyone? Raise a hand. Okay, praise the Lord, a few of us, and praise the Lord for that. But most of us have not yet. So what do we do? Is it that our fasting and prayer was not, did not work? We didn't, we didn't fast or pray long enough? Well, sometimes we do need to fast more, but I want to encourage you also. Remember the story I told you last week about that friend of mine whose son, she found out that her son, the, the son had, uh, was in a homosexual relationship. She fasted and prayed every single lunch day, every single lunch hour for one year, and, and God brought deliverance. So for some of us, there will need to be, I, I believe, depending on what it is, there will be more times of fasting and prayer and waiting on the Lord ahead. So don't give up. But what else do we see? I want to encourage you, Matthew 7, 7 through 8. We quote this, <clears throat> And often we say, ask, seek, knock, but this is a, a more accurate translation. Um, and and I, shall we read it together? Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Amen. Amen. So there's an asking, and you've heard dad and mom teach on this before, uh, a, 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 simple, a, a simple level. There are things that are more difficult. Seek. That's more. Knock. How many of you have ever gone to somebody's home? You heard them inside, and you knocked, and there was no answer at the door. What did you do? No. What did you do? You kept on knocking. Did you knock louder or softer? You knocked louder. And then you knocked louder yet. What a wonderful example for us as we wait on the Lord in prayer and fasting. And if there are still answers that you're waiting for, that the breakthrough has not yet come, take this verse into your heart. Ask, seek, knock. Keep on and don't give up. 
don't give up. There are things that are available to us that the Lord will bless us with. There are breakthroughs that will be ours when we persevere before the Lord, when we persevere in prayer, when we persevere in fasting. Don't give up. Now, some of you this morning are sitting there thinking, I got so hungry I had to eat. I couldn't persevere. Oh, no. God's not going to give me the answer. That is not the Lord's voice. That's the enemy's voice this morning, if some of you are thinking that. What do you do? You keep on, you just go back to the Lord again. I was, I was reading, a, I, was, I was sharing with somebody, I was reading a book this week on fasting and prayer, and it was uh, uh, from a man whom God had called to long periods of fasting in his life um, when he was a much younger Christian, and for many, many years he told no, nobody about the fasting and the prayer, and uh, until later on in his ministry, the Lord opened the door and released him to tell people about fasting and prayer and the power that comes and, and, and what God will do as we, as we persevere with him. And he said the Lord had called him to a 40-day fast. At one, and I think he had, go, he had in his lifetime, uh, in his earlier life, had, had, had gone through quite a few 40-day fasts. And, and um, he said he was uh, um, one day, he's, but he said just before he began to fast, uh, he had bought a big bag of chips that he really, really loved. And um, so then the next day was fasting, so he put them away, or he put, I think they were in, they were in the kitchen. And he said, every day as he was fasting and waiting on the Lord, he walked by and he'd look at it. And he said, by about the fourth or fifth day, he said they were calling his name. Come, open me, eat me. And he said he would walk back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And he says the temptation just grew greater and greater and greater. And he said on the 17th, 17th day of the fast, he said he was walking by and he just looked at it and he said he just fell upon the chips, opened the whole bag. It was a big bag, a, a giant bag. I think it was a water fast or whatever. And he ate the whole bag, <laughs> the whole bag. And so he was sharing this in a meeting and a woman said, oh, brother, did you start your 40 day fast all over again? And he said, are you kidding? Of course not. <laughs> he said, I just kept on going. And I think sometimes that's, that's good advice. Just, just keep on going. I, and I, I'm not trying to make light. I, I'm not trying to make, that is kind of funny though, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not trying to make light. But what I am saying is, God's not a hard God. And if you stumble a little bit or whatever, it, you just get back up and you, and you keep on going. If you failed partway through or you, didn't, or you weren't able to fast as long as you wanted to, God's not going to say, well, that person's going to hell because you, didn't, you, bro you, you broke your fast too soon. God's not like that. He's a God of love. He is. He's a God of love. He's not going to punish you. He's not going to whatever. But he wants to woo you to himself. And he wants us to know the blessings and the pleasure of time with him that fasting will give us. It's not that we love fasting, and I want to be honest with you. We are not masochists, and I am not a masochist. I don't love fasting. I don't. I don't. I want to be honest with you. I hate fasting. I do. I hate it. I hate fasting. But... I love what fasting does in my heart and in my life. And because of that, it's a valuable and it's a worthy exchange in my life and in your life. It's worth it. It's worth it because of what God will do as we wait upon Him and as we call to Him and as we look to Him. I, we don't love fasting. Why? It's not easy. It hurts. We give up things. But oh, what we gain. So think of it as we look to the Lord. Think of it not as a, I give up, I give up, I give up. Don't look at it that way. Instead, let us look at it as an exchange. Yeah? An exchange. I give up food, but oh Lord, I gain spiritual food. Oh, I give up strength, but Lord, I gain your strength. I give up these things, but oh God, I gain answers in the spiritual realm. I give up time spent on the TV or this or that or whatever, but oh Lord, I gain souls for you. Let us look at it as an exchange. Let us look at it as an exchange. And so, as we move ahead, if the Lord has revealed something to you during the time of fasting and prayer, walk in that revelation. If He has shown you something, keep walking in that revelation. 
during this week, the voice of the Holy Spirit has become clearer to you, hasn't it? You've heard Him more clearly. Do everything you can to keep hearing the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. When He woos you and when He calls you, answer right away. Don't put it off. When He leads you, say, Yes, Lord, and don't delay. Keep guard what you have received during this time of fasting and prayer. If you've not yet received an answer to prayer, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. That's scriptural. That's scriptural. If the Lord has assured you, I am going to answer this, and sometimes the Lord does that, doesn't He? He gives us a promise, I'm going to. Then you say, okay, Lord, you have promised me that, God, I stand in that. Lord, I thank you that the answer is coming. You don't just let it go and float off. Remain di diligent, Remain per persevere. continue to persevere in the Lord. If there are areas in your life that you have given up this week, there are things in your life that you've given up just because you wanted to spend more time with the Lord, I want to challenge you this morning. You know we don't talk a lot about some of these, th these things at Lighthouse, but I do want to encourage you. If there are some areas of your life that you have let go this week that you might exchange those things for time with Him and intimacy with Him, I want to challenge you are there some things that you've given up that you need to just kind of let go permanently and let them go on? There may be. There may be. There may need to be a, you've had a, maybe a better balance of prayer and, and leisure time in your life this week. Don't slip back to old ways. Let the Holy Spirit keep you where, where, where you have been and don't get back into it. I love uh, Galatians 5.1. It, it, uh, Paul was talking to the Galatians who had gotten very, very legalistic uh, and they were going back under the old law and he says in Galatians 5.1, so Christ has truly set us free. Do you know that fasting sets you free? You're set free in the Lord. It really does. It's not a bondage. It's not a legalism when our motives and our hearts are right. But we are, we, it, we're truly set free. And Paul said to the Galatians, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free and don't get tied up again in, the slave, in slavery to the law. So he was talking about people who had been set free from the law and were going back to the law. But the principle is the same in our lives in these other areas. If the Lord has set us free in these areas, in, in certain areas in our lives this last week, why would we want to go back in and say, now tie me up and get all involved in those things again? How foolish that would be. Let the Lord Keep us free. Walk in freedom and don't get entangled again in bondage. We're not saying don't watch TV at all. I know that there may be some churches that say that. I'm not saying that. Don't touch Facebook or computer games. Although, honestly, a lot of us could touch Facebook a lot less. A lot less. <laughs> I'll let the Lord speak to you. <laughs> but if it has been a bondage to us, if it has something that has sucked up our time, Let's let the Lord get us free in that area, and let's continue to walk in freedom. Amen? Amen? And now, as I close, one final thing. Before we look at just a... Oh, got to stop. At one final thing. I want to tell you a story. And then I'm going to tell you the last thing. Sister Betty, many, many years ago, had a very young niece, a uh, cousin, second cousin or something like that. And it was time for her to go to kindergarten or first grade. I don't remember. Anyhow, it was the first day of school. And her little cousin did not want to go to school. She didn't want to go. She didn't want to go. I don't like it. I want to be home. And they talked with her and they told her how great school would be. And they said, you're going to make new friends and you're going to learn new things and you're just going to love it. And so they built her up, they bought her new clothes for, for the first day of school, and then on the morning of school, the whole family got together, and then her, got in the car, and her mom took her to school, and um, let her off, and, and first day of school, waved goodbye, and then the mom went home, and the little girl was at school. True story. Was at school for whatever time, all day, or, or till lunchtime, or whatever. And then at the end of the school day for her, the mom came and picked her up, and, and got her, and... and uh, went back home. They lived not too far from the school. And her mom said, well, how was it? And she said, it was okay. And then as she got on home, the rest of the family said, well, how was it? How did you like it? And, and the little girl said, it was okay. And then she said, but whew, I sure am glad that's over with. <laughs> and she thought, 
I've gone to school. <laughs> there. I've done it. It's over with. I'm done now. <laughs> one day. One day. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now you know the application, don't you? <laughs> you know what's coming next. Some of us may be sort of feeling like, Phew, there. I've, I'm glad that's over with. We've had our corporate fasting for the year, and we don't have to face it again until 2015, <laughs> January 2015. I want to challenge you this morning to look to the Lord and consider making fasting and prayer a regular part of your life in this upcoming year. Amen? Amen. 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 One day a week. One meal a week and devote that time. Devote, if it's a one whole day, a lot of us have in our jobs, we couldn't devote the whole day perhaps, but the meal times we could. Or some of you, maybe one or two days a month or two or three days a month. Pray about it and say, Lord, this is something I could do. Ask the Lord if you only fasted a short time. Ask the Lord to give you grace for a longer fast in the future. Ask, because the, you do, as you, as, you, as you spend more time with the Lord, the Lord will do more in your life and the Lord will do more in your heart. Talk with friends in the church and say, this is in my heart. I want to fast more. Is it in your heart? Let's band together. Let's fast together. Okay, we'll fast. And many times it's easier to fast together. But I want to challenge you to, because brothers and sisters, the blessings that we have received and that we're going to receive, who wouldn't want those things to continue in our lives? Amen? So I want to challenge you. And I want to encourage you. And I want to say to you, the Lord has spoken to my heart. I want to do this more in this year. And I don't say that in pride because it's not easy for me either. And I don't say it as a boast in any way nor to lift myself up in any way. I do want to say this. Surely as your pastor, I should be fasting more than, than you all. I should be praying more than you all. And I want that more and more in my life because I want the blessings of God in my life. And I want the blessings of God in this church as we seek the Lord. And so I challenge you this morning, I want to encourage you, and we close with just a few scriptures. And um, Ami, let's just start with Jeremiah 33, 3. And this is how we're gonna close this morning, um, just as, as we close. And we're just gonna look at some of the promises and the calls of God in our lives. And I'd like to do, I'd like to do this. And then Ami, you can just, um, after we read them, then you can put up some of the put up some of the next ones. So on this side first, this part of the church, and the rest of us, let's just listen. And then the next two scriptures will be, will be this group, and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. So from this side, shall we just read it together, and, and would you just take that in? Let's read. Ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. Seek the Lord while you can find Him. Call on Him now while He is near. Okay, next. In the middle. Search for the Lord and for His strength. Continually seek Him. Second Chronicles. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. And then from the Sorry. Sorry. Then here. On this side. Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know Him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of dawn or the coming of rains in early spring. I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts for now is the time to seek the Lord, that He may come and shower righteousness upon you. A few more here, this side again. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. Have you been sincerely seeking Him? He will reward you. Okay, the middle group. You are my strength. I wait for you to rescue me, for you, O oh God, are my fortress. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, 
for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in Him at all times. Pour out your heart to Him, for God is our refuge. On this side. For since, I love, wait, wait, I love this one. Look at this. Do you know this verse? Here we go. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for Him. Don't you like that one? Who works for those who wait for Him. Have you been waiting for Him? He's going to work for you. Have you been waiting for Him? He's going to work for you. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And oh, there are more, but let's all read this one together. And we know this one so well. Everyone. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray. Lord, I pray that your people, all of us, Lord, we will take into our hearts your promises, your exhortations, your calls to us. And Lord, we look for you. We wait for you. And we know you're going to work on our behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray you would bless your people as you have promised. God, I pray that they will remain firm and strong and steadfast as they wait upon you and as they watch what you will do in their lives, in their circumstances, and in their situations. Lord, we put our hope and our trust in you. We will not grow discouraged. We will not turn aside. We will not give up. We will not listen to the lies of the enemy that tell us it was, it was useless or was for nothing or other people had a good experience, but we didn't. Lord, we set our hope upon you and we believe the words of your truth, for they are truth to us. And we stand upon them and we do not fall. Bless your people this week. May they go forth with the joy of the Lord that comes from you in the power of your Holy Spirit, in the peace that passes all understanding. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Have a good day. If you've been fasting a lot, be careful.